The topic I took a deep dive into recently is... I've seen a lot of guides online that look like this. Many pictures with abbreviations, which I have no clue what any of this means, and it's very overwhelming. So I searched high and I searched low for what the current literature is actually saying about vape temperatures. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I will say that I will be oversimplifying a lot of terms, theories and processes in order to keep this video short. So to all the sciencey people, please don't beat me up. As a starting point, I'd like to talk about terpenes and cannabinoids. These are important compounds found in cannabis. These are naturally occurring compounds found in most plants. There are around 200 known varieties of terpene, each being responsible for things like fragrance and even the pigment colour of cannabis itself. And that's why strains like sour apples smell like Granny Smith apples, whereas lemon haze smells more citrusy. That's because they have different terpenes or different blends of terpene. A big question is, do terpenes actually do anything? Some believe that terpenes work synergistically with other cannabinoids found within the cannabis plant itself, with each individual terpene actually having their own therapeutic benefit. This synergistic effect has been dubbed the entourage effect by researchers and suggests that terpenes may support the therapeutic benefits of THC and CBD. In other words, if you think about the entourage effect as a TV show, the two main hosts of the show being the two main cannabinoids, THC and CBD, and the terpenes playing an important supportive role to these two stars, and together they work synergistically to create a more holistic and well-rounded therapeutic effect. However, the current literature is quite divided about this, some advocating for its validity based on patient experiences, others argue it's merely a marketing term used by big pharmaceutical companies who sell medical cannabis. What do we know so far? We have cannabis, and it has many terpenes, a compound found in cannabis, and each of these terpenes may provide their own unique benefits. But interestingly, each of these terpenes become vapour at different temperatures, and this becomes important when we discuss things like vape temps. Before we get to the actual vape temps themselves, let's talk about the other important compounds found in cannabis, and you probably already know these. There are a group of compounds found naturally in cannabis plant, cannabis indica and cannabis sativa. They interact with the body's endocannabinoid pathway. These pathways play a crucial role in regulating various physiological processes such as mood, appetite, sleep, pain sensation and more. Now I bet you're familiar with the two main cannabinoids found in cannabis, cabidinol, which is CBD, and tetrahydrocabinol or THC. However, THC is not primarily found in the cannabis plant itself. It's actually found as THCA or tetrahydrocannabolic acid. THCA must go through a process called decarboxylation to become psychoactive. All we need to know is that in order for cannabis to become psychoactive, it needs to be decarboxylated. And the best way of doing this is applying heat. But again, what's important to note is that both THC and CBD become vapour at different temperatures. THC vaporises effectively between 180 to 220 C. CBD has a slightly higher stability starting to vaporise at around 160 to 180 C, but this becomes significantly more available in the 200 to 220 C range. And I know what you're thinking, Sam, what's vapour? And that's a great question, well done. According to the Oxford Dictionary, Vapor can be defined as, a substance that is in a gaseous state at a temperature below its boiling point. When you heat cannabis in a vaporizer, the heat causes terpenes and cannabis to change from a solid or liquid state into gas or vapor. This process is driven by each compound's vapor pressure, which is a measure of how readily it forms vapor at a given temperature. Compounds with a higher vapour pressure vaporise at a much lower temperature, and those with a lower vapour pressure require higher temperatures to turn into vapour. The vapour that forms is actually a mixture of these hot gaseous cannabinoids and terpenes. What do we know so far? We have cannabis that contains cannabinoids and terpenes, each offering different effects. We know that they vaporize at different temperatures and some, like THCA, need heat in order to be converted into their psychoactive counterpart. The reason I bring this up is because I actually read a very interesting paper. It was just a mini review, so please keep that in mind. It's just that, a mini review, that looked into vapor pressure and which temperature these cannabinoids and terpenes become vapor. 
So let's actually get into some temperatures now to hopefully help you. Some of these ranges are quite large, so do take everything with a pinch of salt. So at the lower temperatures, around 155C to 175C, at these lower temperatures, you'll extract the most flavor as most of the terpenes become vapor around these points. You'll also find that the psychoactive effects will be much milder because less THC is vaporized at this temperature. If you start at around 176C to around 200C, at these temperatures you'll find that the terpenes that have a lower vapor pressure, meaning that they need a slightly higher heat to turn into vapor, will do just that, turn into vapor. This means that you'll extract some of the flavor still, but the terpenes that have a higher vapor pressure, meaning that they needed a lower temp to turn into vapor, will vaporize much faster, meaning that you'll have an initial hit of flavor that will weaken significantly. At these temperature ranges, more of the cannabis is decarboxylated, meaning that you'll have a stronger psychoactive effect. I find the sweet spot to be around this range, around 185C. I find that you extract a lot of the terpenes, so you get a lot of that nice cannabis flavor, but you also get a well-balanced psychoactive effect as well. Not too strong, but not too weak as well. Obviously with the disclaimer that everybody's tolerance is slightly different, but for beginners or people who are just starting vaping, I find that this is kind of a good range to build up to. At around 201 to 215C, you'll experience a very strong psychoactive effect. This strong psychoactive effect may be overwhelming for people who may just be starting out vaping. So I would always encourage people to start low and build up rather than starting high and get into a bad place. It's just not worth it. These high attempts, a lot of the terpenes will actually be converted into vapor and evaporate very quickly. So you'll compromise a lot of the flavor for psychoactive effect. If you're someone who needs a strong psychoactive effect, that's okay. These temperatures are maybe a better range for you than lower temps. As I said, I would always encourage new people to start low and build up. And again, the researchers themselves said more evidence in the field is needed, and that's okay. These current temperatures are just suggestions, and they may become obsolete in a year, two years time, when hopefully more research comes out and I'll be sure to do an update video if it does. So the next section is going to be what I'm going to call and it's basically where I'm going to go off script and basically just verbal diarrhea all my thoughts up at you guys. So enjoy. Hello, um, if you've gotten to this point in the video, a huge thank you for sticking around or if you're someone who skipped the whole video just to listen to the ramble, uh, then hello to you too. Um, but as I said, this format will basically be just verbal diarrhea, my thoughts, uh, and interpretations of the field um, around vaping and vaping temperatures and I think a lot of it is very situational so if you're someone who's in excruciating pain and you really need that psychoactive effect from the THC then probably a higher temperature is better for you at that moment in time or if you're someone who has had a long day they've got back from work and they just want to take the edge off whilst they do some housework then maybe some lower temps enjoy the flavors put some music on you're able to do a lot more because there's less of a psychoactive effect, but you'll still feel it. And you may even get some benefits from the terpenes as well. And you're going to see a lot of guides online, like you should vape at this temperature or you should vape at that temperature. And I would say be your own researcher and find out what, what works best for you. And I also don't feel like you have to stick with one temperature just because you or a picture or even this video and think, oh my goodness, now I'm going to have to always vape at 185C. No, you don't like experiment it honestly if the next time you get a prescription of um, your medical cannabis that's maybe new or different uh, or even one that you've had loads of times before and you're on a day where you're not doing much and you just want to maybe experience the flavors drop your temperature your vape temp to really low like as low as it will go and slowly build up to about 185 c and you'll experience more of that flavor profile because more you're extracting more of the terpenes at a more gentle rate and it's really enjoyable it's really nice it's like i don't know people sampling wine essentially there was also an important consideration around what strain of cannabis you're, you're vaping um, obviously each strain of cannabis has completely different profiles of uh, cannabinoids and terpenes but i think if you start looking at it under a microscope it gets a bit overwhelming and it doesn't really matter i think if you kind of keep some general ranges of temperatures like i've sort of broken it down to low medium high um obviously i 
incorporated a wide range of temperatures within that but it gives you flexibility and I think that's what it's about it's just about being flexible and your own research and just learning what works essentially for you this little journey down the rabbit hole has been really interesting I've really enjoyed it and uh, I'm actually thinking about doing a longer format video on the different types of terpenes or the key ones at least what strains that they're found in and potential benefits that they may have so if you're interested in that do let me know and uh, yeah I really appreciate you sticking around if uh, you did catch the whole of my ramble and yeah I really